Hello everyone, welcome to the biology video lecture. Uh, in this video lecture, we are going to start with a new topic that is cell, the unit of life, okay, which is chapter number 8 in our NCRT textbook. So in this chapter, basically what we are going to study is everything about the cell, okay, what are the two different types of cells, prokaryotes and the eukaryotic cell. We will see what is a prokaryotic cell made up of, what is a eukaryotic cell made up of, and we are going to study a bit detail about the organelles that are present inside the cell. What are the functions of these organelles and so on. Okay, so let us uh, start the topic that is cell the unit of life. Now when we talk about cell, okay, it is the basic, we can say it is a fundamental unit of life. Okay, life <clears throat> when we talk about cell can survive on its own. Cell itself is what we can say itself is a world, okay, inside. Cell has so many different structures present inside and the chemical reactions are happening inside it. Then this is what is cell. So any living organism when we talk about, okay, except the viruses, okay, we cannot include viruses in over here. So all the living organisms, whether it is a mycoplasma, a bacteria, a fungi, a protist, okay, whether it is unicellular or multicellular, the plant, the planty kingdom, the animalia kingdom, the whole body <coughs> is made up of cell. Okay, so when we talk about cell, the study of cell, okay, is called as cytology. There is one more term that is used that is called as a cell biology. Okay, so what is this cytology when we talk? So cytology is basically the study of form and the structure of the cell, okay, and the composition of the cell, right, that is called as a cytology. What is cell biology? When we talk about cell biology, uh, the chemicals, that is the chemistry of the cell, the development of the cell, the genetics of the cell, okay, and the functioning of the cell, okay, the study of all these factors comes under the cell biology and the study of form of the cell, structure of the cell and composition, it comes under cytology, <laughs> okay. If you know a fun fact, that is a uh, human, okay, has two hundred different types of cells okay there are total more than or maybe around <coughs> 200 different types of cells are present in the body and each of them has their own function and so on so we will uh, unravel it as soon as the chapter goes on coming to the next point a human infant when we talk about a small baby okay it may have cells as 2 into 10 raised to 12 cells Okay, a human adult may have 100 into 10 raised to 14 cells. All right, so this is just <coughs> some facts that we should know when we are talking about the cell. Okay, you must have studied. Uh, you must have studied in your lower sections that the first cell was discovered. Okay, was seen by, was observed by Robert Hooke. Okay, and Robert Hooke, he was actually he prepared a uh, thin section of <clears throat> thin section of the bark of this tree which is called as a Spanish oak this tree which is called as a Spanish oak and when he observed the cells of this Spanish oak which he had prepared the slide of okay this is a microscope that he used for it <clears throat> this is called as a hook microscope okay it was somewhere around in 18 in 1670s okay but before that the microscope when we talk about not about the cell but before about before that the microscope that was developed was by Zacharias Janssen and this was somewhere around <coughs> this was somewhere around uh, you know uh, 1590s uh, when we talk about Zacharias Janssen's microscope later on after 1590s some developments took place some evolution happened in the microscope also depending upon the need and the requirement and also the biologist who was studying it so robert hook he observed the cells which are called as a cork cells okay under this microscope so when he observed he observed there are some the honey bee has uh, the honey uh, bee hive has these combs <coughs> and inside these combs you can see these structures okay the same way he observed these kind of structures which had no spaces in between them so they are so compactly arranged okay so there are no intercellular spaces but these cells are dead 
okay he observed the dead cells right then later on when we talk about the microscopes coming back to the microscope Zacharias Janssen developed the microscope later on it was modified by a scientist everyone knows Galileo and later on it was again developed and modified by Robert Hooke okay Robert Hooke also published a book where he mentioned all these discoveries so that book is called as micrographia it is called as a micrographia <coughs> okay and he named them as celluli okay <clears throat> before robert hooke there was one more scientist who observed the cells the name of the scientist is malpichi okay so robert hooke was not a biologist robert hooke was actually a mathematician and a physicist and he came to have fame for a discovery that he has made that has contributed to biology okay so this is all about some of the scientists that uh, we cannot complete the chapter of cell until and unless we don't know the names of these scientists let us now focus some of the other discoveries that has happened in <clears throat> cell biology cytology okay when we talk about protoplasm what is protoplasm if it is a cell okay inside the cell there is a jelly like substance which is called a cytoplasm <coughs> right cytoplasm and the nucleus together it is called as a protoplasm okay protoplasm was first seen by the scientist duardin okay the scientist duardin and it was named so by i'll write here it was named by perkinje <coughs> Perkinje and Mohel. So this is about the protoplasm. When we talk about the first living cell, okay, the first living cell was observed and was discovered by a microbiologist Anton von <coughs> Leeuwenhoek in the year 1673. He observed a bacterial cell. he observed a protozoan cell he observed a spermatozoa okay under the microscope a spermatozoa <coughs> okay and also he observed an rbc under the microscope so these are all living cells that was observed by anton von leeuwenhoek later on <coughs> let us move on to the scientist swan swan basically he discovered the plasma membrane in the animal cells okay swan was actually a zoologist he was a british zoologist and he stated that plant cells have a cell wall <coughs> but when he studied the animal cell the animal cell did not have the cell wall they only had the plasma membrane plant cells they have the plasma membrane and towards the outer side they have one more layer that is called as a cell wall okay but in animal cells only the plasma membrane is present so these are all the discoveries now after this point let us discuss on a very important point and uh, the questions are asked on this point that is about the cell theory okay so cell theory is basically a theory that is proposed by two scientists they studied differently they studied separately on this theory but all together it is combined and again it is modified by some third scientist so when we talk about cell theory <clears throat> cell theory is actually proposed by two scientists so one is a german botanist german botanist what is botanist a scientist who studies the plants okay he is called as a botanist so <clears throat> in 1838 malthias sleden okay he examined a large number of plant cells what he examined is a large number of plant cells and he observed that the plant body is made up of many different types of cells and these cells are basically grouped to form the tissues which carry some specific functions okay the plant also has the cell wall okay later on scientist schwann that is theodor schwann in the year 1839 <coughs> okay we have just seen that theodor schwann has 
discovered the plasma membrane has observed the plasma membrane he was a british zoologist and he studied different types of animal cells and reported that okay the thin outer layer today that we call as a plasma membrane is present outside the animal cell okay he also concluded that the presence of the cell wall is a unique characteristic of the plant cell okay so these are the two things that we have to remember on the basis of what the discoveries were made or the points that were stated by sleden and swan okay <coughs> these were accepted but later on it <coughs> it was modified because they did not say that how the new cells originated okay so for this one more scientist that is rudolf virchow okay in the year 1855 he explained that whenever the cells divide that is a pre existing cells when they divide they give rise to the new cells okay <clears throat> so then this theory was modified and it was stated that all the living organisms are made up of cells and their products what can be the products of the cell okay the cell products can be proteins okay the secretions that the cell does the it might be the hormones it might be the lipids proteins carbohydrates sugars and so on there are so many different types of products so the organism's body whether it is plant or animal they are made up of cells and their product that is the first point second point is just what we have written over here is that <coughs> all the cells they arise from the pre existing cells okay so these are the two points that we have to remember in case of a cell theory so this is just an introductory part to cell the unit of life in the next video lecture we will discuss about an overview of cell and in overview of cell again we have to see some specific points related to the cell later on we will discuss in detail about the prokaryotic cell okay so fine thank you so much everyone for watching the video